Hi everyone, this is T. Fugner. I'm the editorial director for comics at King Features Syndicate and ComicsKingdom.com. And I'm here today to talk with Erica Schultz, the writer on Legacy of Mandrake. Hi, Erica. Hello, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. Um, so you are the writer on a new mini series from Stonebot and Red Five called Legacy of Mandrake. And uh, this this is um, it's a comic based on Mandrake the Magician. Yes. Um, uh, before we talk about Legacy of Mandrake, I'd love to get to know you a little bit. So if you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, uh, I think that would be awesome. Um, well, I am a writer, editor, and letterer. Um, I've written for Marvel, DC, Image, Dynamite, uh, bunch of different publishers and now um, Stonebot and Red Five and King Features. Um, and uh, I used to work as a background artist and animator at a studio in New York called Continuity Studios. And um, I, I love sequential storytelling. I really do, whether it's, um, you know, comics or storyboarding things. I, I just love the idea of telling stories and creating an emotional connection between characters and the story and an audience. And I hope that's what we did with uh, with Mandrake here. Thank you. Uh, so are you working on anything else you wanna tell us about? Do you have any other projects that are really exciting for you right now? Um, I do actually. Forgotten Home, which is a Comixology original series. Uh, the trade paperback is out at the end of June. Um, so if you wanna pick that up on Comixology, uh, unlimited Kindle unlimited or prime reading. Um, I'm also an editor for Mad Cave Studios and we're going to be announcing uh, a lot of fantastic new books coming out. Unfortunately, I can't talk about them just yet. Um, and then this great series that we're doing with uh, Stonebot and Red Five and King Features. Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing more about your other projects. Uh, so, so Legacy of Mandrake. Now, this is a book that is based on Mandrake the Magician, which is a comic that started in 1934 by Lee Falk. Uh, it was a newspaper comic strip. So, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about who Mandrake is? Um, Mandrake is a a uh, character who is basically a crime fighter. He travels all over the world, solving mysteries, solving crimes. Um, he had a, uh, in the original comic strip, he had uh, a sidekick, this man named Lothar, who was actually uh, the, um, he was, I believe, the crown prince of uh, this African nation, and he ends up leaving his home to travel the world with Mandrake. Um, it's, there were some bits in the original that were a little um, racy for nowadays. You know, there was a lot of uh, social issues that really were not dealt with properly in the original comic. So obviously we wanted to make sure that not only when we were working on Mandy um, and updating it, but also making sure that these are things that we are going to address in terms of inequality and giving characters uh, more uh, agency and giving characters more space and things like that, and more representation. Thank you. So what, did you know about Mandrake before you started working on this project? I did not. I was I was very unfamiliar. Like I had heard the the name Mandrake just in general, and it's, it's funny because I actually work with Tom Mandrake uh, at the Kubert School. So anytime I would hear Mandrake, I would always always think about him, or I would think about you know other artists and things like that. Um, but the character of Mandrake the Magician, I wasn't familiar with at all. And so I, I did some you know deep dive research, and and you know uh, you at King Features helped. Um, help give me some more uh, original strips and stuff to look at and really get the feel of it. But the character is, you know, he's, he's this, he's this very heroic kind of, even when I'm wrong, I'm right kind of character. Um, and he, you know, basically fights for the good of the world kind of thing. There's a lot of other sort of evil magicians and, you know, thieves and, you know, would be despots, and he is the one who's going to step in and find a way to take him down. Great. So, 
what was that when you you were looking at all of these and i remember you did a lot of research and really yeah. really dug into those old comics uh what was what was your favorite thing about the original character um i liked the fact that he sort of made no apologies for using his magic and he didn't have he wasn't worrying about having this sort of secret identity he was it, it, as the comic uh, progressed because it started in 34 and it went all the way to I think the early was it the 90s or early 2000s it kept going but uh, Lee it, Falk, it, yeah actually yeah I think it's actually until like the 2010s it, it ended in like the 2010s it's I mean, Lee Ended Falk wasn't recently. on it the whole time, though. No, um, no. But in the in the originals, when that Lee Falk was on it, um, Mandrake didn't have a, a a secret identity, and he was um, later on, like in the later '30s, he was kind of almost like a household name. So, like, he would show up on the shores of this, you know, place, and it would be like, "Oh, you, you're the great Mandrake," and people would more or less like trying to try and solicit his help. You know, we've got this, you know terrible thing going on or um uh one time uh, they were i think they were in like morocco there was like you know the black market thieves market and you know you have to bust the thieves market because all this crazy stuff is going on you know so he he made a name for himself he made no apologies for who he was and he just sort of like swept into town solved your problem and i'm on to the next mystery you know, he was kind of like the Alan Quartermain consummate adventurer <laughs> kind of kind of character, you know? Yeah, thanks. So now that brings us up to today and you're working on Legacy of Mandrake. And Leg Legacy of Mandrake introduces a new character. Um, so if you can tell us a little bit about her, um, I, I think we're all, all really excited to meet her. Uh, Mandragora Torado Paz, or Mandragora Constanza Torado Paz is Mandy Paz. Uh, she is the, well, I don't want to give anything away, but she is um, related tangentially to Mandrake. And uh, she, her mother and Mandrake were friends. And she has the uh, ability to wield magic like Mandrake did. She's a magician, um, though she's untrained, really. So she has a lot of raw ability, but not a lot of discipline with it. And uh, so there's a lot of room for these sort of like funny moments where she's like, oh, this is totally going to work. And it totally doesn't. <laughs> you know? um, she's She is a typical 17-year-old girl. She's got, you know, high school that she has to worry about and college applications that she has to worry about. And, you know, sometimes she butts heads with her mom, you know, so it's not. And on top of all of that, she's got this, you know, otherworldly power that she can't always control. So, you know, there's, there's a lot that she's sort of having to deal with. Um, but she has a best friend who is like her anchor. He really, um, he tries to keep her, kind of on the straight and narrow and tries to remind her like, look, yes, the weight of the world might feel like it's on your shoulders, but you can do this, you can handle it and you can lean on me. And um, her best friend LJ is actually the son of Lothar who we're hearkening back to the original uh, sidekick of Mandrake, the original magician. So I was always putting in my scripts, the OG Mandrake. Um, so uh, so we brought in Lothar from the original comics as, you know, a, um, a, a secondary character as the dad who is, you know, very supportive of his son. He knows about all the magical uh, elements in the world and stuff. Um, in this version, though, we are giving Mandy and LJ uh, secret identities because you think about it like, you're a teenager, you have enough to worry about. Like the last thing you want to do is have people knocking on your door because, you know, you're some famous superhero now. Yeah, no, that would probably be a problem. They can't just yeah. like pick up and go go gallivanting around the world. Like exactly. Like, like Mandy. Yeah. So so when we talk talking about Mandy, uh, you you know, you really built this character from the ground up. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about um you talked a bit about her life i'd love to you talk for you to talk a little bit about 
who she is as a person and the character aspects, um, the the sort of personality you created for her and what what qualities about her are really important to you. Um, she is a very proud Latinx woman. She is, uh, I mean, I, I got a lot of direction from Stonebot, from King Features as well. Um, but Mandy is a very proud Latinx girl. She is, um, she's very confident, but she's like a lot of teenage girls in the sense that, you know, she will project this confidence and then deep down she's questioning herself. So she's not only questioning herself just in general life, you know, life choices, but also using magic and things like that. Uh, she's a bit snarky. Um, she's uh, fun. She likes, she likes making people laugh. Um, she also likes the fact that she has a little edge on people with the magic. And so she, she knows that you, you can't just like go around maliciously bullying people, but you know, she also knows that when she sees an injustice, she might, you know, do a little twinkle to get, you know, get a little, you know, little edge on somebody. So that actually brings up Mandy's powers, which obviously are really central to the story yes. that you're telling. Um, and I know, you know, from talking to you while, while we've been working on the book, that you really thought very hard about how Mandy's powers worked and how you wanted to set up the magic system for Mandy's world. And so I'd love to hear more about how you approach creating this magic system. Well, I mean, I think there needs to be like rules when it comes to magic, because a lot of times um, people will be like, oh, well, it's just magic, just fix it with magic. Um, so I think there needs to be rules. And we tried to create this sort of world where, you know, Mandy, has a lot of different abilities. You know, she learns to be able to um, create figure images of herself, which is basically like astral projection, um, which is something from the original Mandrake comic book, uh, excuse me, comic strip, where Mandrake would project himself um, sort of across space to be able to give a message to someone. So Mandy sort of slowly learns how to do that. Um, she learns how to do uh, what's called uh, telepathic hypnosis, this idea of sort of bringing someone into a mindscape. Um, but it's not like she can't just like snap her fingers and disappear. Like it's not something that easy. Um, she is learning defensive magic as well as offensive magic. And a lot of it comes down to sort of like using like, you know, blasts and sort of like almost, almost like, like pushing people away uh, to be able to sort of like clear the way. It's like, okay, I don't really want to start punching and kicking, but if I have to, I will, but let's just move you out of the way, like almost telekinesis kind of thing. Um, but she's definitely, um, there's so many abilities that the original Mandrake had going through all the strips. And it almost seemed like every comic strip, there was this new power that was, um, that was revealed. And I didn't want to, you know, pile all that on Mandy because she is a novice. And when we start with the original Mandrake, he's already a master. So he already knows, you know, exactly what he can do and such. So I wanted to make sure that Mandy had these, you know, goof up moments, but also doesn't realize like the true abilities that she has. That's really cool. And and then you know, one of the things that one of the things that we see in Legacy of Mandrake is that Mandy's not the only one who we meet with powers. Um, LJ also has powers, uh, but his are a little bit different. And you, you know, I think it's it's really interesting how the dynamic with their powers and the dynamic with their friendship work together. Um, so if I'd love to hear a little bit about how, you know, how you built that relationship. It's a really important relationship in the book um, and sort of about their, their, each of their relationship to their powers. Um, in the, uh, you know, when you're starting off reading this new series, um, LJ, uh, there's sort of a bit of a contention between Man Mandy and LJ because Mandy doesn't originally know that LJ has abilities and he's sort of kept that from her. And uh, through uh, one of the plot points, he reveals them. And she's kind of like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Why didn't you say anything? And his reasoning behind that was a couple, you know, it was, you know, two, threefold. One, you know, she defines herself a lot by her abilities and he being such a supportive friend, he didn't want to be like, oh, well, I have powers too, so you're not so special. You know, um, he wanted to be supportive. Secondly, his powers are way more limited than hers. He, he has basically defensive abilities. He can create sort of defending shields. And he uses that to protect her when she's fighting and to protect the people that, um, you know, the civilians that are kind of caught in the crosshairs of, of these conflicts that they uh, come across. Um, and also, um, LJ's basic role is, I'm a loyal friend. I, I love Mandy like a sister, and I just want to help her. And sometimes when people are a little more special than others, their egos are kind of fragile. So sometimes you kind of have to take a bit of a back seat to not, you know, pop the balloon of, of your best friend. And trust me, I get it. Um, but, but he's definitely, their relationship is super important just in general because um, Mandy has a single mom, Mabel, her mom is a single mom. Um, so Mandy doesn't have a lot of people in the world to really count on. And LJ, because LJ's dad comes from this idea of magic and LJ's dad comes from this, uh, this world of magic, you know, there are very few people that really understand it. And so LJ is one of those people who understands Mandy and Mandy, you know, because she's snarky and she dresses a little different and stuff, she tends at school, she's kind of like the, the weird kid. So LJ is kind of a weird kid too. So it's almost like the freaks and geeks, you know, kind of, um, you know, they, they bond together that way. And it helps that, you know, their parents have known each other forever and stuff. So they, they really have like a very sort of um, familial kind of relationship. Um, maybe it'll be something more, who knows? Not saying anything, no, just, <laughs> maybe there'll be a love triangle, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh-oh. Uh oh! All right, there are ideas. There are ideas written in the notebook. So, oh, I'm excited about this notebook. I, I haven't seen this notebook, so <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to it. So, um, you know, I think that you know beyond beyond the characters, you also um you also did quite a lot of work creating Mandy's world, and one of the things that um that I've noticed reading your scripts, and I think was really exciting to see was how much you built reference into your scripts. Um, and I know that you you have, have an art background yourself um, and that, you know, but, you know, when you're writing, you really do quite a lot of research and quite a lot of recommendations in terms of what sorts of references the artist might want to use for world building and what kind of world you want to create. Uh, and I'd really like to hear more about that process. Well, I know that, you know, a lot of people will just say, oh, well, the writer just writes the scripts, hands it off to the artist, and the artist does all the work. And there are times that that is the case. Um, a lot of times when it comes to uh, building these, you know, otherworldly kind of things, you want to be able to say to the artist, this is the idea that I have in my head. This is not edict, but I hope that this um, this image, this, you know, video clip, this, you know, quick thing here, you know, quick gif, I hope that this at least sparks your mind into expanding this, into bringing, um, bringing this more to life. I hope it, it gives you just a little inspiration to bring it more to life. Um, I like giving artists reference. Um, I know that sometimes in script writing, um, it's really difficult to articulate exactly what you're thinking. So having an art background, you know, I'll do thumbnails sometimes in the, um, in the script. Um, I had, uh, there's a sequence in one of the scripts where it's a 12 panel page and I know 12 panels is like, holy crap, 12 panels is a lot. Um, but I, I thumbnailed it out and I said, you know, this is how I'm, I'm picturing it and this is how it will work. So, you know, use this to, to try and figure it out. If you can find a better way to do it, you know, good on you. Um, but if not, this is how it, it will fit in 12 panels. Um, 
And I, and I know a lot of artists may kind of almost be taken aback by getting uh, thumbnails from a writer, but I, I remind them, I'm like, look, I, I have, you know, been a background artist and an anchor and a colorist and stuff. So um, I'm not, I'm, I'm staying in my lane technically, you know, still kind of thing, because my lane is basically the highway. Um, <laughs> but, but I, you know, I want to be able to, I want the artist to at least have a starting off point. Like, I don't want them to feel like they're starting at nothing with just a couple of words on the page. I want them to be able to grab some of the inspiration and say, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, let's do it like this or let's do it like that. Um, and especially with some of the, um, the main characters were basically designed off the bat. But uh, some of the other characters, we kind of had discussions with Matthias at, over at Stonebot and, and the art team over there about, you know, what kind of characters are we looking for in terms of some of the bads? You know, are they this type of character? Are they that? Are they anthropomorphic? Are they, you know, more like clay face kind of, you know, bleh, you know, blobs kind of thing? Like, how, how are they? Um, so there was a lot of discussion with the art team on it because you know it really is it's a collaborative process comics are a collaborative process and you want to make sure that everybody is able to to throw in you know their bit on stone soup you know what i mean yeah no that's a great way of putting it so so you mentioned bads and i don't want you to give too much away but uh it sounds like it sounds like bandy's gonna have a conflict in the story um, yes yeah um every mandy Mandy will uh, feel what a lot of teenage girls feel is uh, she will trust in someone and that trust will be betrayed and um, things get ugly and Mandy's got to find a way to, you know, she has to find a way to sort of find her own agency, to find her own abilities and not just like the magical abilities, but just like the confidence within herself. Because a lot of times you know, especially with teenage girls, confidence is a lot of times it's just sort of like a projection versus actual, true, genuine, I believe in myself. Um, so Mandy's going to have some some hurdles that she's going to have to jump over and to really, at the end of this, come out as, as you know, on top as she can. I'm really, I'm so looking forward to seeing these finished books. I, you know, we're, we're still, we're still in the process and, uh, you know, it's just so exciting. Um, so getting you know, pages, everybody is else. Fun. getting pages. Is yeah. Fun. I was yeah. When it comes to life is always really great. So the lead artist on this project is Diego Giribaldi, um, who's just been doing such a phenomenal job. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll be seeing some some of his artwork uh, as we as we, you know, go through this, go through this uh, video. So, it, you know, I it's just every single every single facial expression is just like, oh, they're so good. They're the so act, good. That's so. the thing is that the acting is is really important. And Diego really gets the acting, really gets the you know, the snarkiness, the, these like almost like micro expressions on the face that really um, show the emotional conflict between Mandy and Mabel or Mandy and, and this bully at school and things like that. Um, and, and really, I mean, they do a really fantastic job. Yeah. There's so many good eye rolls in this. <laughs> and <laughs> As every teenage girl is just all about the eye roll. It's, it's really, it's really great. So, yeah. So I'm so excited to share more of this with everyone. Um, so, you know, I think, uh, you know, one of the things, one of the things that's interesting about this project for me is that, we, you know, it's, it's effectively, you know, it's not just taking a legacy character who's been around a long time and updating that character. It's effectively building a brand new character um, off the groundwork of a legacy character. And, you know, for you, you know, what what was that process like? And what were some of the maybe most fun parts of it? What were some of the most difficult parts of it? Well, yeah, because in this world, the OG Mandrake still exists. You know, people know who that character was and and he's still he's still around or at least his the knowledge of him is still around. 
So it's not like Mandy is just this brand new character and no one's ever heard of magic before. Like people have heard of, of, of Mandrake. Um, some of the, the most fun parts were grabbing like little Easter eggs throughout for, or from uh, a lot of the really old strips um, with um, references to certain characters, uh, references to certain locations that are very important. Um, uh, one of the things is that um, Mandrake and many of the magicians like him uh, all attend this sort of uh, one school um, uh, basically called the College of Magic. There's a very loquacious Latin version of it, and I'm not even going to attempt it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Collegium de Magicosis or something like that. I'm not even going to attempt it. Uh, but basically there's, um, you know, so there are characters that are from that, that I kind of wanted to hint at and I wanted to uh, just pay homage to. Um, some of the other things, like, like I said before, was, you know, there are some really you know, not cool stuff in the original comic yeah. strips in terms of how women are treated, in terms of how minorities are treated and such. So I wanted to make sure that we took the 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 good inspirational parts and then all that, you know, misogyny and racism and garbage were like, nope, that's not even, you know, we're making Lothar a, a character with his own agency. You know, he's nobody's sidekick. He was, we, we refer to him as Mandrake's partner versus his sidekick, you know, because that just that phrase sidekick is already like denigrating, you know. Um, so he was partners with Mandrake. He worked with Mandrake. He traveled, you know, and he gave, um, he gave uh, uh, insight, whereas in the original, um, he's literally just like this you know, strong man who basically is just the muscle for Mandrake. And we, we didn't want that. We wanted to give him, we gave him heart. We made him a dad. He's, um, you know, he loves his son. He, he cares about Mandy. He's close friends with Mabel. You know, he's, he's kind of like the, the big grizzly bear with a heart kind of thing. Um, so we wanted to do that. Um, and then just, you know, for people who are familiar with the original Mandrake, we have a couple of characters pop up. Um, you know, here or there, uh, just to sort of give them like, oh yeah, I remember so and so, or oh, I recognize that character. Oh, oh, they mentioned this person. Oh, maybe they'll be doing something else. You know, kind of thing. Yeah, there's a lot. There's also a couple characters who are, you know, who are clearly re related to other characters from uh, yeah. from the original where those characters don't necessarily show up um, but you you see you see some you see some familiar surnames um, come into the mix and uh, you know it, it's really fun to see where their where their families landed um, in this you know in this next generation so yeah so um, you know I I think we're we're pretty much we're close to we're close to time here but I did want to ask you um, what you hope people will take away from this book um, my goal always is to write a book that is enjoyable and fun and has an emotional hook for an audience. So I don't want people to look at this series and say, oh, it's a superhero book. I'm not into superhero books or, oh, it's a magic book. I'm not into magic books. Um, I want them to look at this and say, oh, this is a book about a young woman finding her place in the world and having to navigate not only just being a regular teenager, which is in and of itself is its own issues, you know, um, but having to navigate this, having this ability and the responsibility of this ability and, you know, the good and the bad that comes with it. And, you know, you, you look at any superhero, you know, the second somebody knows you have superpowers, you have a target on your back, you know? So she's, she is fun, she is sassy, she's vulnerable, and she's not, the, she's not the character who can do everything and is perfect and everything. No, she's very flawed and she admits it. And you see a lot of her personal growth throughout this as well. So I just hope people want, you know, if you want to read just a fun book about a cool teenager who's finding her way and kicking ass along the way, and learning some stuff about herself, then this is definitely a book that you need to pick up. 
And Thank if you, you like magic, great. So much, Erica. <laughs> yes, and if you like magic. Um, thank you so much, Erica. Uh, I'd just like to, real quick, uh, let us know where people can find you and your work online. Um, okay, so my socials are um, Erica Schultz, S-C-H-U-L-T-Z 42 on Twitter, or Erica Schultz Writes, W-R-I-T-E-S on Instagram, um, and I'm at ericaschultzwrites.com. Um, and obviously this is going to be on like the King Features website and the Stonebot website and the Red 5 website. So you can definitely look to pick it up through that. Yeah. And uh, we're really, really excited to share Mandy with everyone. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, you can actually read the original mandrake if you want if you want to get a head start on comicskingdom.com and follow comics kingdom at comics kingdom on twitter and instagram uh thank you all so much for being with us and have a great rest of your comic-con at home